paintings in China in general, and particularly this format, which is the hand scroll, are not meant to be kept out on a long-term basis. They're actually only brought out on special occasions and enrolled in small gatherings of like-minded people who look at them kind of a bit at a time and then roll them back up and put them away so they have a very good chance of survival. So there's this nice little silk tie which goes around and keeps the piece intact. Uh, there is a core, which is actually a solid piece of paper, which has, in this case, jade ends. And then there's a label on the outside, a very old label in this particular case, which tells the title of the painting, the artist, and the circumstances under which it was painted. The painting is meant to be viewed in sections, and it's meant to be viewed in about as much as you can comfortably hold. Now often, as you come into the painting, there will be an introductory inscription that's missing. But then you do have a title piece mentioning who the artist was and the title of the painting. And then it's kind of rectangular areas of red characters, old-fashioned uh, seal characters. And these are placed on the painting by people who have owned it, by collectors. Paper and the pigments on these are very sensitive to light, so we don't display them very long. As a matter of fact, the kind of standard for us is six months every five years, so the chances are very likely that you won't see this particular painting. But this is a good example of the format. The techniques are using a brush and Chinese ink, and in this case, considerable numbers of light colors. And we can see the, the young boy carrying the musical instrument, uh, his bright blue coat. So again, we're rolling through this format, kind of seeing progress through the landscape as we go along. And we pick up a pathway. It's coming into a rather informal fence, and then a hut. So here comes the path behind the hillock, coming back to the little hut. And here's the scholar sitting on his hut. He's looking back at the landscape uh, towards the area that we've just come from. So the path then goes on from the, from the, the hut, and you can see the stone, stone path vanishing into a bamboo grove and a number of other trees and behind another hillock. And then it reappears again somewhere behind this hut that you can see, or perhaps a gateway. So here's the scholar with his, with his cane, uh, with his, uh, his scholar's cap, walking along this rather rugged path here. And behind him comes the boy, carrying quite weighted down, that appears, um, with something on his back. And what that is is a bundle of scrolls like this. So the gentleman is either leaving um, the, the scene where he's been doing poetry and calligraphy, or this is a friend coming to visit. He's coming on a different path and about to enter the garden at a different entrance, and that would be perhaps this building down here. It's a little ambiguous. And then we go into a rugged landscape section, which is basically the end of the garden and the conclusion of the painting. One of the wonderful things about this hand scroll format is that additional pieces of paper can be added on to the end, and people can make comments about when they viewed it, the circumstances under which they viewed it, the friends they viewed it with, and their admiration of the scroll. But all of this is done by the artist. Here's the artist's signature right here, Sun Cajon. So all of this inscription was done by the artist at the time the painting was done. And that's the end of the painting, with more collector seals at the very end.